when he took the job, did you believe it would go as well as it has? Yes. Uh, yeah, I thought uh, there were some decent players here. Um, I thought it was possible when I looked at the fixtures. I always knew that the Luton game was going to be a tough one away. And uh, But apart from that, uh, I thought we could do it. You've been here before, but would this be your biggest managerial achievement to date, do you believe? No, 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 no. Um, winning a championship uh, with Gillingham and then winning a championship uh, with um, Barnet. Um, to do that over a 10-month competition uh, in both seasons, we were top of the league for the whole season, both clubs. It's, uh, to be a champion is the best feeling in the world. Um, this rescue job, uh, a great escape type job, is, um, is testing, it's challenging. Um, but no, the, the championships, winning championships is the best feeling. What's the key, Martin, to, to situations like this when you're when everything rests on one game? What's, what's the key? Is it the mental attitude or what, what wins you that game or what loses you it? You've been there before. Mm, you know, I've had um, great escapes at uh, Notts County, mm. um, great escape at Brentford. I think we're here, I think yeah. it's probably been three great escapes already. Yeah. Um, what does it? I don't know, just do your job. That's the message to the players, just continue to do the job that they've been doing. Uh, they've trained hard, and they've worked very, very hard. And um, just to continue believing in yourselves, believing in each other, trust each other. And um, all the hard work we put on, on the training pitch, put that out onto the match field. So there's no need for them to have any fear or be scared. It's, um, it's a great occasion to be involved. What have you changed since coming here that's allowed this run to happen? I really don't know because I wasn't here before. What have you brought, do you think, to the table that's injected this energy and enthusiasm to the place? Um, I get asked that 20 times a day. What have you done? What's happened? What do you do? <coughs> um, I just do what I do. And for me, it's um, I do attacking play. We do defending play, we do set plays for and against. Um, we had somebody that was late on a regular basis, but he hasn't been late since. Um, he hasn't been late since because he's gone. He's at home now, and I don't know where he is. He doesn't. He's not here anymore. So I suppose we could say we had some discipline that we injected, and um, and after that. Treat them good. Look after them. Treat them good. Treat them with their people and look after them as people and try and get the best out of them and help them. And I suppose those principles really. Can you, you know when you say that they, there shouldn't be any fear? There's bound to be a little bit, isn't there, in their heads? Do you not think that the consequences, if, if it doesn't go right, do it, it, you have to sort of just drill that out of them? Or? I think you would have fear if you're unprepared and not practiced and trained, then you'd have fear. If you've practiced it, like a golfer, if you've done your bunker shots, you've done your putts, you've done, done your long island, uh, uh, long irons, practice with your driver, you can go out and play and know you're in a good place. We've done all those things on a regular basis, morning and afternoon, no days off. No, there's no need to be feared. We're, we're armed, we're ready, and we can go in to the challenge that we face, knowing that we've done everything we can possibly do. Martin, does it help that Barnet have been here so many times for a club's mentality to be almost used to these last days? They did it five years on the bounce, didn't they? Is there a little bit of, of being there before which helps the club, even though it's new players? Does it help the mentality of the club? Well, the people at the club that have probably been through all that that you're talking about, they don't actually go over that white line. So um, it's these players, these new players, um, are embracing it for the first time. We've been having must-win games for the past month, and the players have responded fantastic. They are a good group of players, and they are a good team, trust me. Will you enjoy it? Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. <clears throat> I love it. Even with all the pressure, you know, even on Saturday, will you still, will you still be able to sit down? Because many managers would be, you know, biting their fingernails for 90 minutes and wanting it all over. No, no, no. 
I'm not like that. No, I'm not like that. No, I'm not like that. I'll be the, uh, I will be the calmest person in this stadium, without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, I'll be there for my players. Um, I know you've got big decisions to make right through to probably the 95th minute in this game. Decisions need to be made. And uh, I'm not one of these managers that will run down the wing and celebrate with all the supporters. I think that's stupid. Uh, you have to concentrate and do your job right to the last minute with substitutions, uh, tactical moves to make sure you get the things right. And uh, come the end of it, um, I'll probably sit in my office and just have a quiet cup of tea with my wife um, until we just go home and let everybody else celebrate. The best thing is to see the Barnet supporters celebrate and the joy that it will bring them and the happiness for the players to retain in the football league. <clears throat> for me, I could just comfortably, quietly get in my car and just go home and just sit there and just enjoy the feeling and the happiness that it's brought so many people. And that would make me, that gives me the pleasure. Would you come back afterwards? Do you know yet? Well, it's the last game, isn't it, Saturday? Or would you come back next season? Oh, I don't know about that. The agreement I had with the uh, the players on the very, very first date actually in this room was that um, no contracts would be talking about, spoken about, mine or theirs or the staff. If anybody wants to speak about their contracts, then they won't play. And if any member of staff wants to talk to me about a contract or agent, one agent has rang me. So, um, you know, I haven't spoken to him. I haven't, I haven't spoken to anybody. I have just focused on Saturday. And it's a bank holiday Monday and I've got a nice barbecue over at my sister's. So we've got plenty of good things to look forward to. But you sound like you're enjoying it. I love it. So why don't, you know, are you tilting towards whatever happens, sticking around? I haven't tilted towards anything. As I said to my players on day one, we will get as many points as we can right through to the last game of the season. And our attitude, our energy and our professionalism Whatever the outcome, whatever the outcome, even if there was nothing riding on this game tomorrow, we would have been preparing exactly the same way and wanting to win for our supporters to make tomorrow a great day for this football club. It was hard work getting into the Football League with these players. And now I want to see if we can do our best to stay in it. And for the players, that would be a fantastic achievement. I know you're, you're obviously not thinking too much further ahead than Saturday, but in the back of your mind, have you got like a mental blueprint of where these players can go next season? Do you think if you're still around and the new position team's there, you can take them maybe to challenge for something next year? I haven't even thought about that. Not even in the back of your mind somewhere? No. Nope. Anything I've thought about in the future is going to my sister's barbecue on Monday. It's supposed to be nice weather. That's it. Do you think you could do something with this group of players further than what they've achieved this season if you were here next year? No idea. I'm not interested. God bless. I can see where your question is going. But um, my only focus and interest is uh, my players' performance, our players' performance on Saturday afternoon and my sister's barbecue on Monday. But whether you're here or not, this club sort of needs to stabilise. You can't keep bouncing in between leagues. It's not good for everybody's health, is it? But I mean, you know, you've got f four last day escapes, promotions, back down, back up again. It needs to stabilise, doesn't it, this club? You'll have to speak to the chairman about that. But you've not got a view on that? No. Right. Anything I've got a view on is my players' performance tomorrow <coughs> in front of our, a sellout crowd. And not tomorrow on Saturday. And that's it. How conscious are you of the, the goal difference situation? The, if if more can draw seven, seven goals needed on your part, is that something that might affect the way you approach it? Nothing will affect what we do and what we approach. I have no interest in their score. I have no interest in nothing what anybody else is doing, apart from our players on the pitch on Saturday afternoon. As long as they give everything they've got and play to the levels that we have been playing at, I'll be happy whatever the outcome. I was going to ask you as well about your relationship with this club, I mean, the chairman once described it as like a girlfriend you can't get rid of. Is there an element of, <laughs> is there an element of sort of romance, do you think, to this? Do you feel it in your heart a bit? Is that a bit, is that a bit flowery? No, it's not at all flowery. When you've been a manager of a football club that wins a championship, 
there's always going to be something special. Always. Um, I have a very special feeling for Gillingham, for the championship we won at Gillingham. And it's the same here. It was, uh, it's a long season to win and to get out of the conference as champions and be top of the league for the whole season is a, t is a tough ask. And when, when you've won that and you've got the medal and uh, you're a champion, um, and you're very proud, very, very proud. Um, and that is why I've got a special relationship with this club. Um, well, that applies to lots of managers, lots of teams, but no, there aren't there, there many people are champions. There's only four every year, no, and I'm one of them. But in terms of five times coming back and coming back again and again and again, that's a pretty much a unique situation in, in English football. I mean, that's, that surely goes deeper than, than winning the championship. There's something else going on. Well, the good thing is with the chairman, he's, um, he just lets me get on with it. I never hardly speak to him. We get on very, very well. I never speak to him. I never speak to him, he just lets me get on with it. He don't tell me you to play. He don't ring me up and says, oh, I don't think he'd play very well. And he don't ring me up and say, are you going to play this player? And tries to put a slant and a persuasive word into people that he wants to play. I never even talk to him. He just lets me do my job. And that's probably another reason why I do, uh, do very, very well here. Do you think he'll be rigging up a direct line straight to your house just in case for a few years ahead? <laughs> I don't look at him for future. <laughs> I imagine it like the back cave, he just gives it a ring, you're there, you come and pick it up and, and come and save the club. <laughs> Literally, it was a Sunday evening and there was a golf tournament on in America. I'm not sure if it was the Masters. Um, and as you do on a Sunday night, it was about eight o'clock, so it laid on the sofa and my mobile phone was on the floor on silent but vibrate. So you're just watching the golf as you do on a Sunday evening at home. And my phone started to vibrate. So you leaned over the side and picked it up. I opened it up. <laughs> and it said, uh, Barnet Tony. And I said to my wife, oh my God, look. And I showed her on the other sofa. And uh, we both smiled. And um, about an hour later, at half past nine, quarter to ten at night, um, I rang him back and said, yeah, I'll start in the morning. So, um, it's crazy, crazy. I was supposed to be playing golf that Monday, and then Tuesday I was supposed to be walking the dogs, and I normally do my gardening on a Wednesday. So I had all the nice things in life, uh, working at West Ham as a, an ambassador, I'm doing a little bit of work for the Premier League with referee assessments. And I kind of had a nice life. And then uh, all of a sudden, on that one telephone call, it's all changed. And um, it's, it's, it's surreal. You sort of feel hooked on it and management. And even, if, even when you've got a nice life and everything else around it. Uh, no, no, no. I've had a great, uh, a great time. Yeah. I had a bit of a scare with my health. So I knew <coughs> I had to kind of look after myself. And uh, a few months ago, I got the all clear from uh, a consultant in Harley Street. And up until that point, uh, I wasn't really interested in coming back into football management. I was just going to, you know, I had a radio show that I was doing for Love Radio as well. And I was kind of easy life, lovely life. Um, and now for the six weeks, it's been 24-7, full on, and uh, very, very exciting. Does that say a lot about your relationship with this club then, that Barnet, the only ones that could tempt you out of your, your nice life to come back into the, the madhouse? I would say Barnet would be the only ones. Um, the offer to go to Chelsea was something I considered. Um, I, had a, I had opportunities to go to other clubs, um, but I didn't think it was right for me at the time. So I have had opportunities to go back in. Um, but it wasn't right for me. Is it an addiction, this, that you can't give up football management? You say you enjoy, like I said, you do say you enjoy the finer things in life, looking forward to the sisters' barbecue, but nothing beats Saturday at three o'clock, does it? 
Um, if you've got a group, good group of players, it's the best job in the world. It's an amazing job. If you haven't got a good group of players and you, the results aren't very good, it can be very difficult. Uh, nowadays, um, for managers, uh, with social media and the criticism and scrutiny of um, each and every decision managers make, the interference and intrusion from uh, the chairman <coughs> who've got lots of money and buy football clubs and feel that the ownership of a football club gives them the right to half manage. It's not for me, I don't like it. And um, here it doesn't happen like that here. I can just do what I want. He never rings me up and says this or says that. So the idea of having that sort of life, which a lot of managers in the Football League and Premier League have that problem, and I'm not very good like that. And I'm not going to manage football clubs where the owners have got to have their say. And it's just not me. The, the, the chairman sounds like an ideal person to work with. There are so many managers that come and go with it, and then you're the 20th managerial change since 2010. So what? So what? <laughs> yeah. So, so, think, so what? So what? How many has he had? Is, is it 20, 20, 20, yeah. 20th change since 2010. Yeah. So what caused that? Do you think? I mean, it's four managers this year, is it? For example. I mean, oh, you'll have to ask him that question. Do you not have a view? No, it's his club and it? it's his business. So um, he's, uh, he's a very successful businessman. He's done very, very well in, in life. <clears throat> so you'd have to ask him his reasons for having 20 managers in that amount of time. On the business side of things, for example, the medical centre coming in and sort of changes here, how different does Barnet feel now compared to when you first came? Um, that's been a difficult transition for the uh, for the supporters to move from the uh, old uh, underhill ground, um, which is is a good old ground, lovely old ground with the characteristics that it had. But the chairman felt it was the right thing to move the club and uh, build this stadium and build other businesses. To within the stadium to make the place uh, accountable and um, for the supporters it's difficult and it has been difficult um, similar to the move for the West Ham over to the you know, that other stadium it's always going to take time I still think this is in progress um, but the, the better this team can get then the more I think the, uh, the Barnet fans uh, will follow um, because it is at the moment it's, it's still quite difficult and all the other things that are involved here it's amazing you know with the gym and the medical facilities that are on hand now it's a top top Premier League type medical centre he's got the very very best of everything and he will he will make this into something you know he will he, he always does and money how, goes to money doesn't it <laughs> and how will the, the fans out there affect it on Saturday I mean it's not been as you say it's been difficult Season's not been the most sort of, enjoyable for them, I'm sure, until the last few weeks. I mean, how much do you need this place to be bounced? It will bounce. It always bounces when uh, I'm here. Um, they've been great since I've been here. <laughs> they sing all the time, they shout all the time. We've banned negative people. I don't. We don't really want them. And. I asked them for help. I asked them to come and help us, support the players, back the players. Um, even if we're not playing that well, still get behind the team um, and make the run in the running uh, a good running. And I also explained to them that whatever happens, whatever whatever happens on the final day, <coughs> we should be proud of our players that we've currently got, and we should make it a, a great day, even if it is our last in the football league. It could well be. We should still make the most of it and cherish it. It's hard to get out of that conference. So we should enjoy being in the in the Football League. And even if it is the last game, we will make the most of it and we will give it our best on and off the field. You say just then you could ban negative people. Is that uh, talk about referring to the trimming of the squad? No, oh, supporters. Support. As you said, if you're not negative, don't come. 
and on the trip of the squad, was it 43 players you had when you first came back? And how many are you working with now? 20... 22. So where the other one's gone? Um, well, some of the others are, are working with a younger group, the under-23s. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few non-contract players. Uh, some of the injured players have been given some time off. We still obviously treat them and look after them, but we can't have them all in at exactly the same time as the first team squad. So our physio has been absolutely brilliant. He, he's had to work double time to have a kind of a, an afternoon clinic to look after the injured players. And this club has got a lot of injured players. Um, so <coughs> it, it's kind of been separated so that it allows us to work with the first team squad and all other players have been kind of still treated okay, still treated well I hope. Um, but they've had to move to the to the periphery. Five to three on Saturday. Players are waiting to walk out. What's the last things you say to them before they walk out to the pitch? <laughs> Good question. We've had a kind of a motto of uh, do your job. Just do your job, and then what will be will be. We practiced and practiced and practiced. And we've trained and trained and trained to do your job, to do their jobs in attacking play, uh, defending play, um, set plays for and against. We've worked on control and discipline. Uh, with um, no yellow cards, no arguing with the referee, being good professionals and good people. What I expect from them is exactly that. Do your job, go out and do a good job. Just do your job. And last question from me. Will Saturday's result affect what you take to the barbecue on Monday? <laughs> well, my family's my family and um, it's, it's a big, big, big day for the supporters, of course it is. And uh, it's gonna be a special day um, on Monday. And uh, Saturday will also be very, very special. Very special day. It's a day I can't wait for. Um, but I was say I'm sleeping well. I sleep very, very well. I'm very um, confident with my players and uh, our supporters. And um, it will be special. And then, of course, on top of that, when I see my sister and my family for a barbecue, that will also be very, very special.